We've got a photographer, a drawer, a painter. His name is Frank. Frank, you're going to give us a talk about shooting the impossible. All right, sir. Come on, take it away. I'm doing props. So I walk around town with this thing a lot. And what do you think the, the, the question I get asked most often is? No, that's not it. What else? That's close. What was it? No. Do they still make film for that? So it takes all of my being not to go snarkily, yeah, I thought I'd just carry this thing around because it's completely useless. So the bottom line, though, is that in 2008, Polaroid stopped producing their film. And a group of folks who were, because I have a tie into the previous presentation, I don't know if that was planned or not, um, in the Netherlands took over the Polaroid factory and started producing this film called The Impossible Project. And they started making film for 300 million cameras. And these cameras, you can get film from Fuji. These cameras, you cannot. Everybody, everybody know what this one is? Remember this, the S670? Ooh, yeah, cool, right? There's 300 million of these that, that can't be used anymore if it wasn't for the Impossible Project. The problem with the Impossible Project film, though, is it's weird. It's strange, it's unpredictable. People don't really get great results with it. I've figured out the code, and I'm going to share it with you so that you two can enjoy Impossible Project film with me. Now, these images are taken this camera on Fujifilm. I will tell you that two weeks ago, Fuji announced that they are no longer producing this film anymore. So this black and white film, not out there anymore. So if you want to do Polaroid film, I suspect within the next couple of years, the impossible film is going to be your only option. Now, anybody ever used one of these besides me? I'm going to walk around. But did you notice the film quality? That looks like what you think about as a Polaroid, right? These images look like the things you've seen out of cameras laying around your house or that you've used yourself. How many of you used these uh, traditional Polaroid cameras before? Yeah, so you love them, right? These, that's, these are what it still looks like. When we get to the Impossible Project film, you're going to see it looks significantly different. <clears throat> and the reason for that is <clears throat> they have no idea what they're doing. They have the machines, got all these great machines there, but they don't have any of the formulas. Polaroid owns the rights to all the formulas for those films. And so these guys who are chemists and people who are passionate about this have joined together to take over this factory and they're just trying stuff. I mean, they're, they're smarter than I am. They, they understand the chemical makeup to a level that I never could, but they have none of those formulas. So they can't produce films that do this yet. Now I've been shooting with this for quite a few years and it's getting better. That's Impossible Project film right there. <laughs> now, this image, I'll show you the original, it's in here, um, is of a uh, street of a um, bus stop in Durham. So that's just the back wall of the bus stop in Durham. But as you see, the coloring and the, the, all the stuff doesn't look realistic at all. So a lot of people don't like it. I did this for my, my wife, did a whole series of pictures of our kids for Mother's Day using the Impossible Project film. And this was one of my son. Well, again, if you want a picture that looks like the one that you have in your photo album from when you were a kid, this is not the film for you. But she has this, this set of six images up on the wall and loves it. She comes in and brings people and shows it to them all the time. So these are all kind of quirky, artistic, funky looking things. The problem is it's hard to get something usable um, because the film is very finicky. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you do that. Um, first thing is, you typically, when you're used to Polaroid, the old Polaroid film, you would shoot it, pop out, you'd watch it develop, right? Do not do that with Impossible Project film. That's a no-no. When it shoots out, you want to put it direct, you want to cover it as it comes out with your hand to keep it from getting any light on it. Stick it in a box and leave it. You leave it four hours minimum <laughs> before you get anything out of it. 
I am not making this up. This is one of the people, this is one of the people, people don't understand how to use it, and they, they throw it away. Because they look at it, and after an hour, they're like, well, there's nothing on here. I'll throw it away. You pull it out of the box for an hour later, and you got something like this. Now, again, that's a tree, but it's not a tree. You know, it's, it's kind of a weird tree, which we like. I like, anyway. If you like this kind of thing, that's how you get it. But you have to wait. You have to be patient. Now, these things also shift over time. So between four hours and four weeks, you see things happen. And so what I do is I have a box of them when I expose them. I kind of put them on the dresser. And, you know, the first day I'll pull them out and look at them and think, that's kind of cool. I like that. Put it back in. And if it gets to a place where I really like the effect, I shoot a digital copy of it. So that's number two tip. Number one tip is don't put it outside and watch it develop because it won't work. Two, be really patient with it. And three, um, look at it over time. And when it gets to a place where it has the effect you want that's interesting, that you like, this is a nice little uh, field in the Mississippi Delta um, that's just been, uh, been uh, the, the rows have been done. So here's an example of, this is right after it's shot about three hours in. And this is the digital version of this that I did probably a day and a half later. So you see how much more you get. Well, over time, guess what? It goes back to this, because these things are not very stable. Because what did I say about the people who are doing it? They don't know what they're doing. Right. It's not their fault. They're trying. Um, so this is the green wall in Durham. I don't know if you guys have been there. That's getting ready to get torn down to make room for the, uh, the big hotel there. It's not green in my picture, obviously. So I probably should have used color, since it's a green wall. Yeah. What do I know? I'm an artist. We don't think about these things. But you can see the difference as it goes forward. Um, and I have some of the originals in here that the break you guys can look at. So I'm going to wrap up really quick because I know I'm between you guys and, and drinks. And, and that's really a bad place to be in general. Um, so I then create the digital negative uh, copy of this by taking a photograph of it. And then I print those. And so those are the things that I display like at Visual Arts Exchange, which is where we ran into each other. And that I do you know, for printing and selling. And then that stays the same. And the original just kind of go in and out and, and scoot around. So it's a lot of fun. I would greatly encourage you to do it. Now, I pick up cameras all the time. I'm at the Raleigh Flea Market every weekend. Anybody who wants a Polaroid camera, any of these things, let me know. I'll be happy to give them to you. I got tons of them. I buy them for $5. because People don't realize that this thing, the battery is not in the camera. So it'll never work without a pack of film. The, the, the battery's in the film. So people will pick up these polar cameras, they'll push the button and nothing happens, they'll go, oh, it doesn't work. Here, you can get it for $2. Great! <laughs> I stick my film pack in, push the button, and it works beautifully. So another important tip. All right? So I hope you had fun. And if you're interested in any of this, come see me at the break, and I'll talk to you about it, show you some stuff, and you can contact me. I'll be happy to give you a Polaroid camera for your effort.